Oh, on today's show, oh, on today's show, there's going to be fighting for the first time. You're going to see gloves come off. You're going to see fisticuffs happening live on the Fantasy Footballers because today, there's some mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The ultimate draft kit will keep you on the up and up, and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatecraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's mayhem time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mike succumbing to the will of the people. I. That elected him. Felt like a puppet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, just pull the strings and I'll, and I'll say the word, Bart. Say the word. <laughs> Dance for me, boy. <laughs> Um. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for dancing. For You're us. welcome. Welcome yeah. into the show, one and all. Saturday, July fifteenth. It's my anniversary. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, you. And am- I'm going to celebrate with some mayhem. Some mayhem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. We've got a mock draft mayhem episode. We have never, ever given this power to Jason. <laughs> Mistakes have been made, you fools. I. Agree, and I am excited to see what happens. I will take this responsibility very irresponsibly, so I want you to know that. That's a very responsible thing of you to say. Thank you. I'm confused. Is it responsible or? It's a huge responsibility that I will misuse, mistreat, okay. yeah. and uh, so you're go not, wild with. You're no Spider-Man. Oh, it's, I mean... That our friendly neighborhood is wrecked if I'm with Spider-Man. With great power comes <laughs> great disaster. Yeah, with that Isn't power that comes cool tricks. Like, that's what I'd be doing. I wouldn't be saving people. I'd be like, check this out. He would be just, like, uh, sticking random people up on walls. <laughs> yes, I would. You would. Oh, for sure. As you walk Get by. out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of this. Swift. Um You'd be using it to just like retrieve items in the in the grocery store for your cart. At oh all yeah, time. I'm not I'm not moving at all. <laughs> my my legs would have no muscles soon. I'd just be <laughs> pulling myself everywhere on strings. Well, we're happy you're with us, Foot Clan. It's a Saturday episode, a mock draft episode. Very much looking forward to it. Should be fun. The football season is so very close. Uh, I believe it's like fifty four days away, something like that, and. Um, you know, it, it it's here. We're going to be into it. We're going to have so many camp reports to talk about. Our rankings, which are in the Ultimate Draft Kit, on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. This is the time of year very soon where we will see some changes. I mean, you got to stay water. That's been a principle on this show. And it is – I'm not going to pretend it is super easy to do. It is not. Because you, you sit here and uh, we get in debates with one another mm-hmm. and we have uh opinions about players that go back years opinions on players that go back months and both of those can cause what we uh sometimes call take lock you can just believe something about a player and you do your rankings and you get it ready for the ultimate draft kit and then you get new information and you have to be willing to change your mind even if it means agreeing with one of you. That is correct. And, That's well said. And, and the worst thing that could happen this summer is if I was convinced that Alexander Madison was going to be a thing. 
So that's what I'm talking to my therapist about. He's going to be a thing. It's just how big of a thing. That is the question. So, um, but there'll be there'll be updates. The ultimate draft kit is changing every single day, every single week. We are we are moving uh, players around, stat lines around, new information, new adjustments. Stay water. Win at your draft. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, Twitter at the FF ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. It's also that handle over on threads. And is, is there is there threads dot com or anything? Threads it's dot, a dot io. It's a dot net. It's a dot it's net. It's a dot net, brother. Hold on. Wait, I'm not that's a joke. No. Hold on. No, hold no, on. No, no, hold no, on. No. no. No, go for it, Mike. Take it. I hold mean, on. give them what they deserve. Hold on. Hold on. Give I'm them just, what they deserve. I'm just checking in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zuckerberg, yeah, one of wealthiest people yeah. in the history of the world. That's correct. Rolling with a with a dot net. That is correct. Okay, that's real. <laughs> that's not a joke. Threads now, dot net is the do, is the website. No, I mean dot net hasn't been used outside of the nineties when it was like, well, oh, there's another one. You could go dot com or dot net. Is this like a we're we're doing a vintage Wouldn't a th- cool throwback to when th- URLs were dot net? I mean, literally, if you go to the website, it says get the app. So I would have gone with threads.app if you didn't, if you couldn't get the right. .com. Wow. But we went with .net, which I don't know if we even have the fantasy footballers .net. No, of course not. Why? Uh, Nobody's being like, well, well now we got to go get it. <laughs> all right, make it happen, somebody. <laughs> Look, .net, it's all the rage. Yeah, uh, that's on Al. Al, take care of it. Uh, use your own money. Um, all right. What's we- that cost? Like 99 cents a year? For .NET, yeah. they're just giving them away on the street corners. I mean, if you've ever you want a .NET? You got a .NET? If you've ever go to... This is the nerdiest conversation <laughs> of all is, time, by yeah. the way. But if you've ever gone to buy a website, the .com is always like a premium price, and they try and talk you into .NET. And .biz. And, and, and they're like, it only costs, you know, five cents. You just add it. Just please, please add it on. Take take over. Someone it, someone grab this. It's also available for every website. You want Coke.net? <laughs> still available. <laughs> Nike.net? Yeah, yeah, probably available. You They're know, just still there. <laughs> like, why do I need that? Threads.net. You, Get neither of you knew that. That's funny. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know why, but it is. And um, I guess uh, we're there too. So, jointhefoot.com is the community. Uh, our quick question of the day comes in from Alan in Chicago. It's a good one. It is. He says, I heard you guys, and we forget this sometimes yep. from the, the lingo. He says, I, I heard you guys talking about drafting from a 1Z position or a 1Z position or something like that, and I have no clue what you're talking about. Can you please explain? My Google searches have come up with nothing. Absol- Try Google.net for your, for the next one. <laughs> Still uh, available. So the the terminology, is, we're just going with the slang word as it 1Z, as in if you've ever had a baby, you put them in a onesie because it's just it's one piece of clothes uh, or clothing, whatever. I don't know it, how would you say it? Yeah, yeah, one piece. Don't, of don't focus on that. Go on with the description. So and then you button it. So it's just it's a one piece. And uh, I, the the first time I ever heard the terminology, I think it was from from JJ Zacharyson and Denny Carter, and it was just like that's that's a fun way to describe a position where you only need one of them. Right, yeah. so, so that's need, all so it means. For, it's yep. singular. It's 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 a onesie quarterback and tight end in most leagues. There's one of them. Yeah, if uh, you're uh, in a super flex league, it's just tight end or or kicker. If you've got a kick, you know, yeah. it's I mean, just, technically there are two Z positions. <laughs> right, and, and running threesies. backs and wide receivers. But no one wears a two Z. Some people have to. Mike, oh, and you should shouldn't be called be... a bikini. <laughs> you know, like it's that, a two piece. Oh, that's the two Z. <laughs> yeah, for your bikini. <laughs> Try that out. Try right, that I'm gonna out. work on that. Yeah, it's gonna catch on. Yeah. So that's all we mean is that if you're drafting a onesie position that is a quarterback generally or a tight end um, or a kicker or a defense. Yep. So uh, anything you only have one on your starting roster. Which we do have a Fantasy Football 101 explaining the acronyms and positions and and articles to get people ready, thefantasyfootballers.com. That is .net. Uh, That is is correct. (laughs) Soon to be. Soon to be .net. It's coming back. I assume we're going to forward the .com to the .net, right? Oh, yeah. Already oh, yeah. done. It's already done. <laughs> yep, it's forwarding yeah, Al our has website. taken care of it. Um, one of the benefits of recording the show. I'm checking on coke.net, guys. <laughs> good, good. There, it's a really long load. I don't know if anything's here. 50 cents. I think the people years. running .net thought about just doing the big power switch and turning it off. <laughs> like just letting it all go. 
Al, see if Coke.net's available. <laughs> <laughs> that could be lucrative. Check that out. Um, okay. We don't have a lot of news. The only thing I'm going to mention, and we've been talking about it, you know, came out about Saquon Barkley. Now it's out about Josh Jacobs. Monday is the deadline for signing a long-term agreement. Neither player has committed to being present. They both said they're going to hold out. This report uh, coming from Fox 5 Las Vegas says he's going to skip the beginning of training camp if they don't reach a long-term agreement. Uh, anecdotally, and, and from the names that I were look, was looking at, players that missed some time, it didn't matter. They all performed. They all had big years. Okay. Obviously, if, if, if the, the holdout somehow went all the way up to the cusp of the season, um, one thing that was neat hearing from Josh Jacobs, because uh, this was an interview. I saw an interview with him, uh, a local interview, and he was just talking about this was the first season Despite that workload, you know, he had all that work. It's the first season he's never had bumps, bruises, or anything to rehab. So he went into the offseason completely healthy. And so all of his workouts and all of his uh, routines were not predicated on rehab for the first time in his career. So um, I'm not worried now, but I, like I said, we like to have these things buttoned up as fantasy players when you start moving players that high up your rankings. Josh Jacobs sits at like three in our consensus, three or four. He's at four, running back. At running back. He's, he's, he's number four for me. Um, that is a high draft capital pick. Saquon's really up there. Both of those players, you want to know what you got, but you've got time. Yeah, Saquon's three for me. So there, there is risk, and I don't, ha I don't blame anybody for bypassing them. I think the expectation right now for both players is that they will not get a long-term deal, and they will not be there for the start of training camp, and they will be there for the entirety of the season. All right. You guys ready to uh, experience Jason with mayhem power? Mm, not really. Yeah, me neither. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, I'm going to explain what's going to be happening here. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time for a Mayhem Mock Draft, Mike is my nemesis. We're going head-to-head. -head. Per usual. Yeah. Um, and Jason sits in the driver's seat with three Mayhems that he can use on each of us during the draft. Now, you can only use each of these one time per person. You have the ability to veto a pick, which will force the drafter to choose again. Mm -hmm. The ability to replace a pick. Yeah. In, in essence, your choice. Mm -hmm. That one is disturbing yeah. me already. Yes, and then is. the third one, opponent's choice. So you'll give uh, me the power to pick for Mike in a spot. And so we need to check with you before we lock our picks into the draft. Yeah, yeah. Good reminder, because you weren't great at that last time around, Andy. And I will back this thing up. Yeah, if I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are jumping in, and we're going to do a 12-team half PPR, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Uh, Brooksy picked some random starting spots for us, and Mike got the 104, and I am at the 110. And so without further ado, we are going to begin this Mayhem Mock Draft. And uh, now th there's part of me that Jason's so excited for this draft, I'm worried that the first six picks will be <laughs> his six Mayhems. <laughs> might, and then I'll just and then take he'll be off. Out. He'll just be like, leave. you guys enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> I'm on break. But uh, let's begin this draft. Justin Jefferson goes with the 101. Okay. Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler at the 102 and 103. At this point, we get to hand the baton over to Mike. His first pick, maybe, of this draft. Yes. Well, I guess it'll be your first pick no matter what. But uh, whether it's who you want, <laughs> we'll find out. Yes, that's a more accurate representation. If I'm inside. Coke.net is taken. Oh, come on. Keep searching. Search all the big brands. If I'm inside the, the top five picks, I feel great. Um, because I'm in the fourth. I don't think that there's anything that Jason can do to harm me. I think he understands that as well uh, because here with, with the two running backs that went, now it's down to Jamar Chase, uh, Cooper Cup, and Tyree Kill for me. I do have Jamar Chase ranked as my highest wide receiver. That would be – I'm just going to make it short and simple. That would be my pick. You are allowed to pick Jamar yeah, Chase. I figured. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to these a little bit. That would have been great because then I would have just taken Cooper Cup. <laughs> well, uh, I realized at the 110 what I was rooting for. So Mike went with J uh, Jamar Chase. Cooper Cup went next. Saquon Barkley, 
Travis Kelsey at the 107. He's just always going there right now. Tyreek Hill and Jonathan Taylor. This is good news for what I wanted to do because I also feel a little bit protected from mayhem in this situation because there are two players that I have ranked three and four at the running back position. I was rooting for one of them to get back to the 110. Those two players, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs. And so I am sitting here with both on the table. So my selection here will be the higher ranked of my group, a player that I would be thrilled to get in any draft I could. Nicholas Chubb Nicholas. will be the selection if I am permitted to make it. Hmm. This is the worst part. Like I have to ask permission yeah. to yeah, make my right. draft. Picks. I do feel. Look like, at the throne. I do feel ask. Small. Please, Father, may I make my draft pick? So right now in this very first round, I think I think mayhem can be caused by pushing the onesie on either one of you. Travis Kelsey is gone. Um, I'm I'm gonna allow the entire first round to go how you guys want. So Nicholas Chubb can be the pick. You are allowed to make it. You guys are off to a great start, and you're going to have such a good time here today. Um, well, it's a good start to the five running back situation that I had last time. Maybe that should have been a pivot. Um, here we go. Nick Chubb off the board, and then Bijan goes next. Stephon Diggs, CeeDee Lamb, and A.J. Brown. Here I am with my number four running back on the board. Josh Jacobs still available. I would love to pair those two. Hmm, however, would you? <laughs> however, would you? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> we're going quick. We're going quick because it doesn't matter. I'm using my own here. I am choosing the selection for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm look. I'm just giving you the best football player on the planet. The, uh -oh. the number one player. The the most important guy. In the NFL, you get Patrick Mahomes in the second round. Okay. Well, congratulations, Andy. So I'm riding some sort of Super Bowl high into my very, very high second round pick. Not This isn't the end of the second round. If you wanted Mahomes, though, you're, you have to take him right there. But what if I didn't? <laughs> uh, Nick Chubb, Patrick Mahomes. You shouldn't have drafted him. Those at home now uh, – I love that my watch is giving me an alert. It's your turn to pick in the footballers mock draft <laughs> mayhem draft. Um, Nick Chubb, Patrick Mahomes is the start that I was forced into. Uh, there you go. Josh Jacobs went next. I'm sorry, Josh. I tried to draft you, and I can't. Devontae Adams, his teammate, goes next. Derrick Henry, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Tony Pollard at 208, who we talked about on our last episode. Now, Mike is sitting here in the second round. Jamar Chase already on the roster. Quick turn after this pick, and uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. So, at this point, looking at the running back position, uh, Brees Hall, man, Brees Hall is such a tough pick right here for the multiple reasons of when, when will he really be ready to go off of the ACL injury and the, the murky cloud that is Dalvin Cook we still don't know where he's going to sign. We may not know where Dalvin Cook is going to sign until August, and that creates a a, a very difficult situation for Brees Hall. Ramondre Stevenson, I have him ranked as, uh, we've been over this, a top five running back, also known as my number three. So if I were taking a running back, that's where I would go. I think, yeah, oh, man. I have I have a couple backup running backs I like as well. And then at the wide receiver position, it's still really strong. Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddle, T. Higgins is probably out for me because I don't because I'm not gonna build a Bengals super stack here with my first two picks. And then Chris Olave. So if I have my pick, I am I'm gonna take Garrett Wilson here. Nice try, yeah, loser. Yeah. <laughs> Mayhem. <laughs> It's, you know, it's a really long draft. You, I can, know. you can pace yourself. Oh, no, I don't know how to pace myself. <laughs> I have very little self-control, Michael. Um, here's <laughs> the the truth. Okay. I gave Andy a onesie. We had a quick question on a onesie, and it only feels fair for this mono e mono draft to do something that we don't usually do and have both head-to-head -head drafters taking a quarterback early. I so love this guy. You get Josh Allen. Yes, the current okay. highest ranked uh, average draft position. So both you guys are set up to experience from different parts of the draft 
what is it like in 2023 where these quarterbacks are going? This is their average draft position. They're going in the the anywhere from the early second to the early third round. <laughs> the big three are. I know it's gross. I don't like it. Uh, of course you don't. That's why we're doing a little bit of mayhem here. I will say that personally, I have bypassed these three guys because I think right now, if they if they repeat what they did last year, not just them, but the entire quarterback position where it's those three lapping the field, um, then then it's worth it. But history doesn't repeat itself like that, so I I do think well, it's a bad pick that I have made you so take. Yeah, at least I got Josh Allen who led all quarterbacks in top five performances, top five, uh, eleven of them. It, Josh Allen is he's currently my number one quarterback, so. Look at that I guess glass. It's better than that, that loser number two. When you Patrick gave me Mahomes. when you gave me Mahomes, I was hoping for Allen there for Mike. I really was. I was hoping you would go that route. Uh the second round is concluded. I have Chubb and Mahomes. Mike as Chase and Allen. After Allen went oh, Garrett Wilson, man. Jalen Waddle, and Brees Hall, who you were talking about. Come back with the third round in a second. All right, back into our Mayhem Mock Draft. Jason has used two of his Mayhems, one for each of us, and saddled us with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen in the second round. Um, this this is interesting because while, Mike, you said that, you know, maybe Jason was uh, – he could pace, pace himself. Yeah. However, he put us in a position where he knows what our strategy now is. He knows the holes we have to fill when you invest in a onesie position that high, and uh, that's that's not necessarily good for us. So Jalen Hurts starts off the third round to team one. Mark Andrews went next. Ramondre at 303. Maybe, Mike, before the break you were groaning. Was that uh, yes. because Ramondre could have been your selection? Yes, it was. I feel like at some point in this offseason, Mike might start selecting Ramondre at the 101, 102 range. I mean – you are really Why not? You are really Go get your guys. Ramondre. Um okay, so Mike you're on the clock, Chase and Allen on the team. <sighs> yeah, all right. So I have a sweet quarterback here in the second round. Uh, <laughs> uh the running back position unfortunately Ramondre did go. Naji ETN are the highest ADP running backs. Uh, don't necessarily love it. And then at the wide receiver position <laughs> See, what you should have done, J John, done, Jason, is just put T. Higgins on my team because that would have been oh, absolute. Nice. Just and, then put, and then put Joe Burrow on his team next. Well, he can't. You can only do one. He could have given me the pick. I, yeah, I would have known I would have known what to do. <laughs> fair. Very fair, but uh, you screwed it up. So uh, Chris Olave would end up being my pick here. I mean, generally speaking, I, I want Higgins because I have him ranked higher, but just for, for roster construction, I'm not sure I want to – just completely ride or die every single week with the Bengals wide receivers. I want to spread it out a little bit. So I would be picking Chris Olave here. So now you have a, a wide receiver and a quarterback. You and, and you're just saying that you think the, the wide receivers on the board are just that much more valuable yes. than the current running backs left. Available. Yeah, so so T. Higgins and Olave, to me, those guys are in a, a different type of tier where the running backs are I mean, down through the next I don't know eight guys or so I'm if one of them comes back to me I'll be pretty happy there's okay. a chance there is a, certainly a chance that none of them make it back to me I will allow you to select the wide receiver here and Chris see Olave? how yep yeah, okay. you can grab Chris Olave so that you start without a running back through those first three rounds and see how that progresses <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good idea um, DK Metcalf goes next. Najee Harris. That's the name that I want to acknowledge. Mike was, uh, maybe giving, I don't know, a bit of a downgrade to in light of drafting Olave over him. Debo Higgins, Devonte Smith. Now I'm not thrilled that five wideouts went off the board in the third round and four after my last pick. So nine wide receivers off the board is thinning out that group quite a bit for me. I don't have one on the roster. If I'm looking at names here, you know, Keenan Allen and Amari Cooper are the top by ADP. Um, once you move beyond those two, you you, you enter a question mark. Uh, That's why I took Olave. Question mark party of, of Ridley and, you know, Hopkins and London and Watson. And that's not a group I really enjoy very much. At running back, ETN still on the board. I like that. 
Took him in the last mock draft. Jameer Gibbs, I like that. I'm going to try to ignore the fact Jason is sitting there lurking in the corner. I'm going to try to logically, because I want to take him in stride. I'm going to be a man about this. I'm not going to try to out-engineer Jason. I'm going to try to go with my thought processes here. And uh, I would like, I think Etienne and Gibbs are equivalent. So I think my next pick is going to be Keenan Allen here in the third round. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I don't think you were. I don't I, think you were going to uh, do it. I, I, you know, I, 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 I thought hard about it, but Where I, are we going here? I do think I'm going to give you the pick, Mike. I'm going to let you put whoever you want on his roster. I think that Keenan Allen is a, a large different tier than every other wide receiver available. So taking okay. him off. Um, I th I think it just you know kind of hurts the most. It's just a little twist of the knife. Not like I'm not b bleeding you out. I here. I don't know if yeah. I think you just felt. I think you felt the button calling I, your name so right there because I, I got a quick turn here. I thought you were gonna go ETN and I wasn't going to do the button. I wanted to see kind of Mike so, with the two wide receivers and a quarterback, you with two running backs and a and a quarterback. I didn't get to finish the thought, but ETN and Gibbs I look at very similarly in terms of getting them. So I was going to wait for one of them in the fourth round. There you go. Well, Mike gets to select your S pick. So I'm trying to balance having a good time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I get to make uh, Andy's pick. With chucking me off a bridge. Yeah, with, I get it. With I that, get it. But also, like, you know, I mean, with all, but I want to follow your rankings. And... It might be a little bit of a of a, a stretch here, but you are. Uh, oh, I guess you're coming back pretty quick. But whatever. I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna follow your rankings. Uh, your tight end three is he's still on the board. Oh gosh! Wow. You, I mean, you got to go get your guys, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not my guys. <laughs> you got it. You got him as your number. Th I'm looking right third, now. Number three tight end does not mean third round. Number. <laughs> That's not what that means. But it's but it's Dallas Goddard. I mean, that's a, that's kind of a surprise <laughs> that that he's ranked that high for you. So that's that's my pick. But I I mean, I was going to give you T.J. Hawkinson because that's always just a funny thing to do. But I don't want to do that when you give me. I a don't want to abandon the way that you have projected these tight ends. You have you have George or uh, Dallas Goddard finishing higher than T.J. Hawkinson. So I'm going to go with that route. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, there's part of me that oh respects the rankings yeah. argument. <laughs> That's good. I I'm not the mayhem here. <laughs> I, I thought he okay. I thought he'd go like Amari Cooper or something. But this... here, like, here's a question I have for Brooks. Do I still have that one left in mind? Yeah, oh yeah. Pick oh, for yeah. Mike. Yeah, oh, you do. That's good. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb, Patrick Mahomes, and Dallas Goddard. I mean, I had I had two onesie positions. I had considered going uh, Kyle Pitts because that just would have been a good time. But that would it be against your rankings too much. Thanks, Mike. Too much. I, so highest so much available. So much respect. I, I think there's a good chance Andy has you draft Larry Fitzgerald. Here soon. <laughs> um, well, or he's not in the system, so we'll just make a note. The best part would have been if Keenan Allen had just swung right back to me, or ETN, or ETN, and neither did. T uh, after my selection of Dallas Goddard in the third. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that's you, Mike. Uh, tra <laughs> Travis Etienne, Kenneth hey. Walker, Keenan Allen. Look, this hey. Joe Burrow, we're having a uh, we're having a laugh here, but for but, but I, I will make a serious point. Sometimes not right there because Andy was coming back so quickly on the turn, but taking guys a little bit out of ADP to and you might get some chuckles in the room. It's okay. Be willing to stand with your process and your projections and take some players you have ranked higher. Play the ADP game. So don't take Dallas Goddard in the third. But, you know, we're, we're, we're all right. Okay. Where, what's Dallas Goddard's ADP? Six, Not there. 606. <laughs> so just my, a my bad. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't know it was my, that You know what? I mayhem, didn't know it was, mayhem has lots of definitions. I didn't know it was that egregious. Uh, I really enjoy. He's a the great fact value then in the sixth round. <laughs> the last he is, he's, he's not not a, not bad there. Um, the last mayhem episode went really poorly for Andy. Ah, <clears throat> and this one has gone so far pretty it's, poorly. It's for interesting. Andy. Yeah. It is very interesting. 
Um, I knew that there was going to be a disadvantage in this mayhem drafting at the 110 because as mayhem proceeds, there is that top group that gets, uh, you know, an early pick, I feel like, helps stabilize a little bit. So I went Nick Chubb, Mahomes, and Goddard. I have no wide receivers. I've got one. I've got one running back. It kind of takes Amari Cooper off the table for me here that he shares a roster with Nick Chubb. Mm. I don't. I can't have my top two in the two positions. The bikinis. Uh, <laughs> in the twosies. In the bikinis. My top two bikinis cannot oh, be man. Chubb and Cooper. And then you see that massive wide receiver teardrop. So I've still got a handful of running backs that I find uh, in the upper echelon. And so I'm going to go back to the running back well, and I'm going to piece my wide receivers together later, which is the cost of Mahomes Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so tickled with yeah. himself. <laughs> so the choice here is Jameer Gibbs, Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones. Those are the three in consideration. When I'm looking at that, you know, the workload for Jameer Gibbs is going to be a question mark. David Montgomery is very good, very capable. The explosiveness is there for him. Aaron Jones, you know what you're going to get. I think he's underrated. He's next in ADP. Joe Mixon, ADP is going to change if we know he's back and healthy. Yes, it will. Um, because I took Goddard and I don't feel as secure with the Goddard pick. Hmm. I'm going to go with Trust Joe. I'm going to go with Joe Mixon here in the fourth round. I'm going to go to secure that 300 touches uh, along with Nick Chubb and bank on that, stabilizing my roster. I hit the button, Jason. Do I have to? Undo yeah, it? no, no, no. Do You're, I have to undo it? You are absolutely good. I you didn't I want was, to go three straight picks for me. I was curious whether you would go uh, Mixon or Jameer Gibbs. I knew it would be between those, but you, you yeah. Gibbs would have been the pick had I been able to take Keenan Allen because Allen was is much safer than the Goddard. Yeah, pick. No, that, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, Chubb, Mahomes, Goddard, Mixon, not the roster I was expecting. Chase, Allen, Olave for Mike. After Mixon, Aaron Jones did go, Lamar Jackson, Gibbs, Amari Cooper, and Calvin Ridley. All right, I am on the clock. I played the game. I took someone who I think can be an elite wide receiver in Chris Olave and was hoping that a couple of running backs fell to me, and they did. Uh, at the top of my list would be uh, – so I have Miles Sanders and J.K. Dobbins right next to each other uh, in my rankings. Miles Sanders, you know, numerically just a couple spots higher. But I do think I would take J.K. Dobbins here. It it certainly is a risky pick, uh, but J.K. 2L, as uh, I think he will be this year, going from one strong leg to two strong legs, I mean, a career average, I, I think he's over five a carry. He's just, when we've actually been on the field, he's been incredible. Problem is we haven't seen him a ton Five on the a field. carry on five carries. That's yes. That's actually what the <laughs> numbers are. But I think that he is an electric player, and I'm I'm in on the Ravens offense this year, and I think Dobbins will eat. So am I drafting J.K. Of course Dobbins? not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, all right. I don't, come on. <laughs> That's mayhem. There's two great running backs that your team needs here. There's no chance I'm 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 surviving today if I didn't give Andy this pick after after you give him Goddard. If I'm just like, yeah, you're good, Mike. I, I would I would walk out of here. Andy just punch me. So Andy, <laughs> you're you have the power. How you feeling, Mike? Hey, I used your rankings. <laughs> you know that's the funny thing is that I just looked yours up. Oh, really? And I I thought to myself. Self, I should use Mike's rankings. And you know what? I have Dallas. I have, oh, I have him at three. I have, oh, no. I have Dallas Goddard. No, no, no. Oh. I, I was going to use your rankings, but yeah. I, I feel punitive right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so rather than go with Kyle Pitts on the board, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a player you have ranked higher than my tight end so you don't feel bad. Mm. Because my tight end, you have ranked lower than this tight end. Yes. And so I just think that because Ridley's off the board, maybe there's a run on Jacksonville players. <laughs> oh, his dude. <laughs> I think Ingram you grab here okay. to secure that position. <laughs> okay. Well, then. I think you have Evan Ingram. It doesn't even make sense. You have him at six. Yeah, but I have, you have Goddard at seven. I mean, you could have at least given me TJ Hawkinson or George Kittle. I just but think, all right. I think when you see that name in the draft, it's going to be too hard to resist. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right, I've Evan. selected Evan Ingram, everybody. Oh man! So that's that's great news for me. This is a great just brawl. <laughs> just 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 put the gloves on and go at it. Well, I started a tight end run. So how do you feel about that? You did take Evan Ingram, <laughs> whose uh, ADP is not in the fourth. I don't I mean, think he's he's got to be like in the in the ninth. I'll round. be honest. Both the Goddard and Ingram, the like the Mayhem's. They feel like it was called delete a pick <laughs> from both of you. I feel like I deleted my third round draft pick, and so Mike needs to delete his fourth. Remember, you're getting a fourth. You're losing a fourth. Yeah, I'm oh, losing a round I, higher. I know, I know. Um, so you're okay. back on the clock. Pitts is still there if you want to double up. Uh, Justin Herbert, Hopkins, Dobbins, Kittle, McLaurin, Hawkinson. Starting the tight end run means that a running back did roll back to you. That's right. And so Chase Allen Olave Ingram is your draft. I will be taking Miles Sanders unless you're going to burn your third pick. It's it is tempting to do that. And I assumed because there was Miles Sanders and J.K. Dobbins there, I assumed when only one of them came back, I was actually going to use this. I am not. And the reason I'm not is because if I use my final uh mayhem and allow you to switch your pick. I actually think Alexander Madison being would there, become my pick. Yeah, and, and, he, and he's fine. <laughs> so uh, I will allow you to have Miles. All Sanders. right, Miles Sanders, baby, with Evan Ingram. Now, what I have left uh, ADP for my... of, of Ingram, by the way, is uh, eight oh six, and you got him at four oh nine. So that's a a slightly worse deal than slightly you worse got. deal than my three ten six ten for. I mean, probably about the same. Both pretty bad, man. 15. You guys. You guys do this for a living? Look at these rosters. Yeah. Um, I would have gone with Hawkinson, but when I saw Ingram was up above Goddard, I just had to do it. Yeah, and and the 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 punitive nature. So yeah. the last mayhem's that I have. <laughs> yeah, because I feel bad. The last mayhem's that I have are. <laughs> so you must feel bad. That is right. Are are your own change your own mind? So I have one left for Mike where he gets to redo his pick, and one okay. left for Andy where he gets to redo his pick. I thought you you don't get the pick for us. That's not what I, he did. I have already done he that. He took our oh, quarterbacks. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hold on to that for when I don't like your pick. When I when you guys make okay. a pick and I just think, eh, that's that's gross. That's not a good pick. I'm going to help you guys out. Oh, the mayhem from here so on kind. out is just going to be kindness. Well, since you guys have already <laughs> murdered each other. Well, yeah. we're we're just showing what like look. Sometimes you know you're in. Uh, you got some shoddy cell service, and it goes out and you. <laughs> And you auto pick a guy who's, you know, four rounds later in ADP as that happens. Sometimes let's that do the does, experiment. This is the self service draft. Yes. Um, Chubb, Mahomes, Goddard, Mixon are my first four picks. Mike took Miles Sanders and then London, Dalvin, Justin Fields, Cam Akers, and Christian Watson went next. My selection here, if I am permitted to make it, will actually be a wide receiver that has a firm grasp on the number one spot there's been some positive uh you know take it for what you will momentum video discussion about kyla murray getting back sooner than later so if i'm permitted to make the pick i'm going to go with a player i think is a guarantee with kyler there to have 10 to 12 targets a game because he's just a go-to receiver so Hollywood Brown will be the pick. That is not a bad pick, which means you are allowed to make it. Okay. All right. Hollywood Brown selected. Thank you. And then it's Godwin, Pierce, Lawrence, and DJ Moore. And I'm coming right back to a, another wide receiver that I think um, proven is what I need here in the fifth and sixth round. If I am permitted to make this selection, it's not going to be a ceiling play like you know, Mike Williams with a big week or the distribution of targets all over San Francisco with Brandon Ayuk. It's not even going to be the tried and true value of Tyler Lockett, who will have Metcalf challenging him, uh, Jackson Smith and Jig, but it will be the big boy with a streak of thousand yard seasons. Mike Evans will be the selection. Interesting. If I am permitted to make it. Interesting. <clears throat> so I, I don't want to use these up too early, but that's a terrible pick. So... <laughs> <laughs> mayhem yeah I, I i you know i oh, thought you were gonna man. go lock it when you said tried and true you know top 15 wide receiver every right. single year for you know many years running I, M mike evans with baker mayfield is definitely not hitting that thousand mark this season i know he's done it a lot in the past but his days are done 
he's like Mike Evans has done it a lot. Mike Evans has done it uh, at a one hundred percent clip. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would just we need to give some respect to a man who has done it every year of his career to call it a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I mean, a lot does not infer a hundred percent. Okay, then I followed it up with a hundred percent. But I do think he Baker did it Mayfield, with some uh, less qualified quarterbacks than. I, than are you saying Jameis Winston? Sure. Or, well, Jameis Winston threw for like 5,000 yards. Jameis Winston's a backup this year. Baker's a starter this year. <laughs> okay. Why isn't Jameis the starter? That's fair. I uh, mean, that's one thing to think about. So now I have to pivot. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. Uh, hey, I'm all out for I tried you. to make a bad pick so that you would force me into it. Um, Hollywood Brown, the targets are there. I'm going to go Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy's the pick. Um, I, I need to – I think he's firmly the one on that roster. I'm going to put some trust in in Sean Payton. Um, I'm a little afraid of some of these other names. I'm a, I like Deontay. Um, I'm not going to get the touchdown totals with Deontay that I want in that offense. I like Christian Kirk. No chance for emergence. Jerry Judy, I think solid baseline, high upside. And I, I also didn't want to take uh, Tyler Lockett because I feel like you wanted me to. I did want you to, but I wanted it for you. I wanted I to help you, know, you. I don't know about that. Really? Yeah, because I have Dallas Goddard in the third, and I, you're also responsible for that. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> that, was, that was Mike. <laughs> I thought Mike was going to give you like Amari Cooper and yeah. stack the Browns with on your team. Yeah, so Judy and, and Hollywood are the two wide receivers I picked up after my four rounds of chaos. James Conner, Michael Pittman, Alexander Madison. Yay, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, Tyler no, this, Lockett. This Yay, didn't go well for gone. me. Yeah, Lockett and Madison going before Mike is that very been, advantageous for Andy. That would so, have been a very easy selection for me. So your me. first tight uh you have <laughs> your first tight end was Ingram. Yes. Uh, your first running back was Miles Sanders. Last round, you have Chase and Olave. Amazing. Josh Allen in the second. Who are you taking in the sixth? So And you've got one left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. Uh, the running backs, top of the board for ADP, DeAndre Swift. That is a uh, – that goes against my morals. Yeah, as, you have not taken him or thought about taking him in any draft. And I refuse to at this point as well. Javante, I, I still need more information of seeing him in training camp before I'm willing to make that and inherit that risk. So that means, you know, we're talking about running backs like Rashad White, just take the guaranteed volume. in the, At the back of the sixth, I guess that's not the worst thing you could do. We don't know for sure if, if this team is going to be any good. I would project them to not be great. And did they fix the offensive line? And then there's David Montgomery sitting down there, and I'm very interested in him. And I think I can play the ADP game to have David Montgomery come back to me. Uh, so then I flip over to the wide receiver position. I'm with you, Andy. I think Mike Evans is still a very, very good wide receiver. Uh, and it's unfortunate that it is Baker Mayfield, but it, it is what it is. And I think that Mike Evans will still end the year with over 1,000 yards. So you uh, talk to me a little bit, Andy, a little bit uh, about Brandon Ayuk because I feel like you, 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 you were kind of having a surge in – in moving him up, and that seemed that that the tide has now pulled away, and that you're, I'm you're, softening. You're already you're already kind of retracting from that, uh, and you and you haven't really mentioned it on the show. Yeah, no, it's not it's not a retraction as much as a softening. I mean, last year this is a player with uh, you know over a thousand yards despite the quarterback tumult, eight touchdowns that vaulted him up to number fifteen, um, but seventy eight receptions. I like Brandon Ayuk a lot. I think he's a super talented receiver. What softened me a little bit was looking at into the splits with Brock Purdy when he had Ayuk and Debo together okay. and when he didn't. Okay. And the fantasy points per game for Debo were better than they were for Ayuk when both players were on the field. So, you know, and my and my kind of belief that Debo's just a he's just a freak. He's better than everybody in football. Yeah, at at what he does. He's a better running back than most running backs. He's a better wideout than most wideouts. But he's the main point is he's a better athlete than all of them. So it's this trust that Shanahan is just going to use Debo. And so I, I softened a little bit in that. Could I see this year going where Ayuk's the leading receiver? Yes, absolutely. Ascendant talent. But could I also see it where Debo 
emerges like he did two years ago? Yep, I can see that too. So um, the fact that there's ambiguity at all in that area is just – I'm not going to force it. I'm okay. going to let IU come to me. I'm, I'm curious. I, kn I know we've we've been on this pick for a little while, but I am curious because we've named so many wide receivers, both Andy's last pick and this pick, and neither one of you have mentioned who I think is the best wide receiver on the board, Mike Williams. That's actually my pick. Oh. I just I just wanted to to get Andy's Brandon Ayuk take before or if, no 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 if, I, if I'm only, I'm only mayhemming bad picks. That's okay. a great pick. Mike Williams is still ranked extremely high for me. I I have him currently sitting at 16. I think the three of us are projecting a much better season for Justin Herbert, not dealing with the broken what, ribs, whatever. Yeah, whatever the, the the yeah was it his ribs? Yeah, I mean he I mean he was playing through a ton of pain, and it was just the ebbs and the flows of the touchdowns for a pocket passer. Herbert's still a great player, so I'm going to go with Mike Williams here. Uh, Mike Williams is a perfect selection for a team that has Jamar Chase and Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. uh, the consistency of Mike Williams isn't there, obviously. Like the last 18 games he's played. 47% of the time, it was exceeding that 10.5 point mark that we look at for consistency. That doesn't rate him very high, but this is exactly where you want those guys. Olave and Chase stabilizing Mike Williams blow up every other week and give me games that will give me performances that will win me a week. So, yeah, that's a good pick. Brandon Ayuk went next. DeAndre Swift, Christian Kirk. By the way, the reason I couldn't take Mike Williams who I probably have ranked high, as high as Jerry Judy is because of the the team layout of my team gotcha. compared to yours. I mean, it, that's not I, relying on Mike Williams is non-existent. That's not been a historical thing you can do. It's a player. Seventy six receptions is his career high, and so do I love him? Yeah, but I need to know he's on the field. Gotcha. Ayuk, Swift, Kirk, Rashad White, mm. who I'm sure Mike would have loved to see sneak back. Dak Prescott and Javante Williams at seven oh three, who I was. Dreaming of maybe coming all the way back. Yeah, to me at that as well. point, I think that that's worth. I think I think it's worth it. I don't know. <laughs> so Mike's back know. on the clock here. All right, uh, perfect. I played the game with David Montgomery. He is my highest ranked running back left on the board. We saw all the carries inside the five go to Jamal Williams. Maybe they try and scheme some things up for their first round pick, Jameer Gibbs, inside the five. But I think more often than not, they're going to try to be high T take the ball out of Jared Goff's hands there and just give it to David Montgomery, who did get a – he got an okay for a running back contract. I mean, guys are not getting money. The Lions gave him some money. So I would be taking David Montgomery here if I'm not hammed. No, he got, he got the second most money uh, on the running back market. This, Is it behind Miles? Yep, Miles okay. was just barely ahead Both of Both of your guys will be, uh, assuming you get this pick, Free agents oh, yeah. are signed with brand new teams. Yeah, yeah. What, what could go wrong? <laughs> um, I, I do love both those picks. I was really sad when Swift and Rashad White and Jamal Williams went off the board. Javante, I, you did J it J again. Javante <laughs> went off the board because I thought those so Montgomery? Could, yep, okay. Okay. Monty is good. Uh, yeah, I had this hope that maybe some running backs would hang around. I was looking at Alvin Kamara in the seventh round, knowing that very likely a, a very slim suspension would have been a sneaky pick in the seventh round, I feel like. One that Jason would have approved. Uh, not that you can not no, approve no, anymore. No. Uh, Deontay went, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Waller, Burks. Um, and so at this point with Mahomes and Goddard. Which uh, you, you don't get to consider Burks here. He's at the, He was taken right before you. But it is worth at least mentioning. Nothing has happened yet. <laughs> I don't know what this cackling sorry. is. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll reveal it in a moment. But the, uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook. The line of of uh, DeAndre Hopkins going to the Tennessee Titans switched from Kyle. I don't know it was if plus five hundred to minus three hundred. So yeah, so a massive, massive swing of he might go there to at minus. He'll probably end up at there. minus three hundred. Yeah. The books are saying we think that this is uh, as close to a sure thing as we can get. Which Hopkins? I don't think that it's it's not the end of Burks having an actual breakout campaign. But it certainly makes a. But it's also it's, not the beginning. Yeah, it's <laughs> look. It lowers the probability drastically for a team that doesn't pass as often that much. I yeah, mean, and Burks becomes the instant two in that oh, situation. Yeah. Hopkins would would hop into the number one role. Nice. I'm wondering if the sports books updated though, because Hopkins last night was commenting on hanging out with. Uh, they did. Kyle said it shifted to minus 175, so it, it's still minus though. But there was there was some uh, some pub going around with him and Kansas City Chiefs. Oh yeah, of course. 
That's produced by his team, and I would I'm producing some of that. No, actually, was, him and Chris Jones were hanging out, and he was commented yeah. on his IG stuff. So, yeah, because he's like, please, Andy, yeah. please don't Remember, make me go to the. Titans. Wasn't it Lev Bell hanging out with Chris Jones as well during the uh, right before he signed with the Jets? That's fair. Um, what he, my he ended cap up on the Chiefs though? This worked out so well for me. Okay, it's so well. Guess who's still on the board, and you can't stop it. Seventh round pick, oh, two oh. rounds later, Mike Evans. You're welcome. Welcome to my team. You're so welcome. You're what right. a what? bad pick it, it was. It really was a bad pick. Yes. Now I got you both. You're well. I told you I'm here to help. That's honestly incredible. <laughs> Mike Evans going at seven ten, where Godwin goes at five wow. eleven, is ridiculous. I never would have been able to pair Judy Evans if I had drafted him in the other order. I mean. You're mm -hmm. invited to my draft. You can hit mayhem buttons in my real draft. Yeah, I will, too. Um, Pickens goes next, and then Dotson. That's okay. I'm probably looking at running back again. I took – I mean, for a, for a draft that had four non-wide receivers to start, two onesies in Mahomes and Goddard, to get Hollywood, Judy, and Evans as my wideouts, I feel really good about. Your team is, is looking all right. Uh, Dotson, Pacheco, and Addison right before me. Um Running back options, I'm going with a player that I think is discount Jameer Gibbs. I didn't get Gibbs earlier, so I'm going with James Cook. Running back for the Buffalo Bills, sure. who I think is going to – I've been trying to actively trade for him in leagues. Um, he is becoming somebody that I'm kind of falling in love with. So uh, Kadarius Tony went next, Rashad Penny. Mike might have had his eyes on him. Juju, sure. Quentin Johnston, and Deshaun Watson off the board. Oh, man. All right, this puts me in quite the pickle here because I have two players that I would love to draft here, like really, really love to, but they're at the top of the ADP, so there is a, there's essentially a 0% chance I would get both of them. Antonio Gibson yep. of the Washington Manders is here. I'm rolling right now in the eighth with just Miles Sanders and David Montgomery. I mean, Ed Gibson is by no means a lock to uh, to have a great season, but Smooches, aka JD McKissick, is is going. I don't. Does that button even exist anymore? No, we if retired. It did, if it did, Dink. he would have slammed it so hard Dink. it would have broke the desk. That Dink. got retired last year. Thank goodness. Uh, but with McKissick out of the way, Antonio Gibson should see the the target share that he was seeing towards the second half of the year, which was for an eighth round running back, that is sensational. Uh, and then the wide receiver I would take right here, it's Brandon Cooks. I again, I don't think he's being talked uh, uh, enough about. He is the wide receiver too for the Dallas Cowboys. They traded for him when they knew that they needed to have a second wide receiver, and I think that Dak is still a good uh, quarterback. So this. Oh my gosh, this is incredibly difficult for me. I think at this point, because there's some other wide wide receivers who are interesting, I'm oh my gosh, Charbonnet's there, Khalil Herbert's there. I'm going to take Antonio Gibson. Oh, 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 you think so? You're right because okay. I wrote down <laughs> it's Gibson or it's Mayhem All because right. there's only one right pick at this spot. I think Antonio Gibson is perfect for the roster me, that you have right now. Let me just ask you a question. Okay. Because you keep not mayheming him. <laughs> he keeps making good picks. Is there a chance he goes through the draft and you literally don't use one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to keep the making good picks? first time ever. Well, I, probably Cooks not. I mean, probably not, Andy. Well, this he, is really surprising he, stuff. He's uh, He's up again. Dylan, Gabe Davis, Michael Thomas, Brandon Cooks, and Jack, Zach, Sar Zach Charbonnet, Rashad Bateman. Mike, you're back. Oh, my goodness. So, it's pretty gross at the wide receiver position now. I would have been very happy with Khalil Herbert right here. So, my wide receiver core, I'm sitting three strong with uh, with Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, and Mike Williams. I, oh, actually, I'm fully balanced. Sanders, David Montgomery. And Gibson are my three running backs, Josh Allen and Evan Ingram as my onesie position. So I'm wide open. I can kind of go any direction. Zay Flowers is at the top of the ADP. Elijah Moore is there. I'm not really as, as a big of a believer that the Browns are going to turn it around as Andy is. Holy crap, the wide receivers are not inspiring here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take uh, – I'm going to take Khalil Herbert, who I project to be the Chicago Bears starting running back. Is that a good pick, Jay? 
That's a terrible pick. Sorry, Brooks. Mayhem. Yeah, I uh, I have Deonta Foreman as their starter over Which Khalil is Herbert. incorrect. But yeah, oh, absolutely. Fine. It could be. Um, it is. It is. Brooks, back well, me up here, please. Yep. We'll Brooks, find out. Herbert's the guy. Thank you. They had the chance to make Herbert the guy, and then they drafted a running back and brought someone else in. Oh, they in the fourth round. Uh, so we'll we'll okay. see. But uh, no, you get a chance to redo it and make your team better. <laughs> You're welcome. I do like this. This is entertaining. Okay. And I'm I'm all tapped out now. Yeah, you are. See ya. Yeah, oh see you God. later. I'm out of here. <laughs> all right. I this is, uh, I I am in a spot. I don't like a. St- good. Oh, gosh. Good. All right, Samaj, Besides right Samaj next, AP, Ryan. Mm, okay, that's fair. That's so fair. That's you've still gone, a better pick. You've gone running know, backs not. four out of five rounds. Sanders, Montgomery, Gibson, and P. Ryan. Mike Williams in between. After your pick, it was all tight ends and quarterbacks. Frymuth and Joku. Yeah, because they saw the wide receivers that were available and said, no, thank you. Yeah, so I, I'm back on the clock at the, in the ninth round here. There are a number of names that I think are interesting, but I'm going to surprise Jason with what he'll consider to be a good pick. I'm in the shot range here. Um, Oh, yeah, he's at the point of just draft whoever. And even though I have projections for the other two running backs that are higher, I am not going to take a player or two players that that are going to sit on my bench and I'm not going to know which one to play. I'm going to take a player that is either going to get off the schneid, catch on fire, and be a, a an asset for my team, or I'm going to let him go. It's Devon A. Chain. I love it. I'm going to take A. Chain there, and I'm coming back around in the tenth round. Khalil Herbert is still there. Could, a, I could see if he could come back to Mike. That'd be a great pick here in the tenth. It would. Um, it would be a really, really good pick. It also means Mike won't get him, so we'll go with Khalil Herbert. It's the right pick. All right, Elijah Moore, Jamison Williams, Dulcich, Damian Harris, Elijah Mitchell. You know, what's funny is part of the reason that I didn't like the Khalil Herbert pick, Mike, was because P. Ryan and A-Chain were on the board, and I think I, I like those picks better. Now they're both off, so I, I wouldn't have vetoed you here. Mike uh, disagrees. He yes, is, strongly. Uh, he's on the clock here. Your final two picks, 10th and 11th round, Mike, round All out right. of the draft. Uh, we're going to get some wide receivers on this team you might here. need a tight end, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, true. only have Evan Ingram. <laughs> that that is that is a a fair point. <laughs> um, I wonder if you thought that box was checked. Yeah, well, is checked good enough? Uh, oh, okay. So ADP wise, here's what we're looking at: Alan Lazard. That's it. That's okay. Odell Beckham. Uh, I'm not really into that pick at all. Jacoby Myers. He got the bag from the Las Vegas Raiders, but. With Adams there and Hunter Renfro is still there, I it's it's hard to see a world where Jacoby Myers is really a ton. Well, you, That's you're, true. You just forget that Hunter like, Renfro is still there, forget and Hunter, Hunter Renfro's Renf- a good wide receiver. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, it's, I mean, they needed a third guy, so I, I don't blame him for bringing him. And then Thielen, no way. Tyler Boyd with Jamar Chase. Thielen's a good pick in the tenth round. No, uh-uh, he's not no. a good pick in any round. Yeah, that's that's where. Like I, mean, I if you, said, if you remember. <laughs> At the top of the show, there are certain players that get in your brain and you're not allowed to see straight. Yeah. Adam Thielen was paid to come in and be the number one. Yes. At and he's going the... to have the most targets on that roster. 100% agree. And Bryce Young is the number one pick yes. and has been getting rave reviews. Everything you said is right. And he'll uh, Adam Thielen will be a top 40 wide receiver this season, and that sounds good. But every single week he's going to score you six fantasy points. At, like that's in this range, you'll get three touchdowns. I'm taking Alan Lazard in this range. I mean, good. You get six point one <laughs> fantasy points. Back on no, I get Schultz. I get either zero, yeah. or I get eight. All right, final pick, Mike. You're on the clock. Round it out. Oh come on, finish I don't, your draft. Just kill me. <laughs> I'm so done with this team. Uh, okay. Oh man, so Darnell Mooney's there. This is just. This is this is not where I want to be. So Adam Thielen's there, Mike. The wide receiver one for an NFL team. I I hope that he drops to you and you can make that selection. Uh, look, we all we all need to draft players that we're pretty sure we could drop after week one to pick up the, the waiver wire hotness. Uh I'm scrolling through here. I'm just trying to find anyone who I think has a chance to be something. Uh 
You know, no, well, let's let's give this man some damn. I'm going Fireball Jones, baby. Yeah, very oh, yeah. nice. Who's the, the reviews? Like, I, I know Tim the, Patrick, yeah, wide receiver, they, Denver Broncos. Tim Patrick. There, I like Jerry Judy a lot this year, but there are whispers coming out of Denver that Tim Patrick might just be the best wide receiver on the team. I I was eyeballing Tim Patrick until I realized they couldn't stack with Judy, like two rounds ago. Right. So he he was on my on my he was list. On your short list. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. But I just didn't want both. Uh, Patrick to Mike, and then I'm going to round it out with none other than Adam Thielen, the final pick of the draft. Your your waiver drop is going to be real easy. Uh, yeah, A chain will hit the wire pretty. No, yeah, not really. Uh, A chain and Thielen, Chubb, Mixon, Cook, A chain, Herbert at running back, Hollywood, Judy, Evans, Thielen at wide out, Mahomes, and a third round Dallas Goddard, <laughs> delivered by Mike. And I, my wide receivers are Jamar Chase, Chris Olave, Mike Williams, Alan Lazard, and Fireball Jones, a.k.a. Tim Patrick. At running back, I have Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, Antonio Gibson, Samaj P. Ryan. Got Josh Allen. That feels pretty good. Evan Ingram. It would have felt okay if that were uh, four rounds later, but it wasn't, so it felt bad. Thank you, Jason. How was your first Mayhem experience? Oh, well, this was great. I feel like I really helped you guys out, and I feel like you guys really – did not help each other out. My, mine weren't too bad on you. You guys took the gloves off and just went at it. That was uh, that was the hey, most mayhem we've had. I followed the rankings, Jason. People love top 200 lists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Hopefully you enjoyed the mock draft. Hopefully you're mock drafting yourself, getting prepared for the season. Thank you for joining us on this fine Saturday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Until next time. Thank you. Yes. For listening. It's going to be very interesting when I get the power back, Jason. Never! Whoa. See you next time, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.